Let me ask you about the fourth thing in facet face of jujitsu, which mm. is uh, self-defense. Mm. Let's say the bigger things, I don't know if you, you know, I don't know why it's called self-defense. Let's call it street fighting. Let's call it fighting. Okay, I, maybe maybe you can contest us that terminology. How about non-sport fighting? Non non-sport. It's fighting. funny, like street fighting. What happens if you go out in a playground? You're fighting on grass. Is that no longer street fighting? <laughs> it's like tennis. You have yeah. like Wimbledon, like grass courts, <laughs> and it's a whole other thing. Uh, no, is there? Uh, what do you think is the best martial art for street fighting? Mm. What is the best set of? Uh, we talked about advice for white belts to advance in in uh in grappling in jiu-jitsu what is the set of techniques maybe a martial art that is best for street fighting okay um again you you're, you're asking some truly fascinating questions here um the way this gets framed as a question is often condemns you to bad answers from the start <laughs> this is uh as a questioner, I'm I'm trying to achieve asymmetry of power, <laughs> and I'm winning. <laughs> um, Put you in a bad position. Don't worry so much about people. Are always going to say, you know, is this martial art better or is this martial art better? The, the truth is, uh, there's only one way to say this: <laughs> combat sports are your best option for self-defense. There are many martial arts, and there is a rough divide between the two, those that fall into combat sports and those that fall into non-sporting martial arts where there's no uh, competitive live sparring element where most of the knowledge is limited to theoretical knowledge reinforced by passive drilling. If you have a choice between a combat sport versus a non-sporting art based around theoretical knowledge and passive drilling, go with a combat sport. Nothing will prepare you for the intensity of a genuine altercation better than combat sports. Many people, as I say these words, are probably horrified to hear me say this. And uh, uh, immediately going to rebut and say, no, combat sports is exactly the wrong thing for you to do because they have safety rules, et cetera, et cetera, which uh, would easily be exploited in a real fight. And if I fought a world championship boxer, I would just poke him in the eye or kick him in the groin, et cetera, et cetera. You've heard these arguments a thousand times. Um, yes, there is some validity to these things. But as a general rule, if you ask me to bet in any form of street fight, call it what you want, between a combat sport adherent versus someone who simply trains with drills and talks in terms of theories of what they would do in a fight, I'm going to go with the combat sport guy every single time. Now, having said that, combat sports need to be modified for the use of of self-defense street fighting. We haven't agreed on a term yet. We'll figure it out later. Um, what does this modification consist of? Well, some of it is technical, okay? So for example, um, a boxer in a street fight now has to punch without wrapped or gloved hands, and that's problematic, okay? Your hands are not really designed for heavy extended use of clubbing hard objects. There's a very high likelihood of of breaking your hands. Mike Tyson was one of the finest punchers that ever lived, but in one of his more famous street fights against Mitch Green in the late 1980s, he broke his hand with one punch that he threw his opponent, hit the wrong part of the head and broke his hand. And he was one of the most gifted punchers of all time. If he can do it, you'll certainly have trouble protecting your hands when you go to throw blows. Um, nonetheless, this is easily modified. And so a boxer can throw with, with uh, open hands or with elbows. And so just a small modification and technique can overcome that problem. So what you'll find is that the general physical, mental conditioning and skill development that comes from combat sports 
allied with technical modifications, and then the most important of all, tactical modifications, will provide your best hope in altercations outside of uh, sports in the street or, or wherever you find yourself. The least effective approaches to self-defense that I have observed in my life have been those where, as I said, people talked theory, drilled on passive opponents, and generally had no engagement in live competition or sparring in their training programs. The most effective by a landslide were those that put a heavy emphasis on live sparring and sporting competition, modified both technically and tactically for the circumstances in which they found themselves. People talk, for example, about how, you know, um, and, and with some validity that, that weapons will change everything in a, in, a, in a street fight. There's absolute truth to that. But this extends into weapons as well, okay? The most effective forms of, of knife fighting that you'll see will be those who come from a background in fencing because it has sparring and a competitive sport aspect to it. But would pure fencing be the appropriate thing? Of course not. You'd have to modify it. But the reflexes, endurance, physical mobility that you gain from the sport of fencing could easily be modified to bladecraft in a, in a fight situation. What you want to look for with regards street and self-defense is not okay, which style should I choose? Should I choose Taekwondo? Should I choose Karate? Should I choose this variation of Kung Fu? No. Focus on the most important thing. Does it have a sport aspect to it? Then, once you've made sufficient progress in the sport aspect of that martial art, start asking yourself, what are the requisite modifications and technique and tactics that I have to, to use or, or, or uh, to input to make it effective for street situations? That's always the advice that I give.